Shalom, shalom. This is 15 Minutes with a Captain. I am Captain Zakar to my right. Soldier Joshua. And today we are going to go over the topic of when the righteous fall. When the righteous fall, what do you do? Let's go to Proverbs 24 and 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. Uh -huh. For a just man falleth seven times. A just man falls seven times. Time. Let's see. Let me see something. Here. Yeah, go to Ezekiel 18 and let's read that in verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 5. We're going here to see what it means to be just. Go ahead. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So it, what it means to be just is to do the laws of God. That's what makes just before the eyes of God. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times uh -huh. and riseth up again. So that's what you do when, when you're a righteous or just man to keep the law. You may fall, you may stumble, but God says that if you are truly a righteous, just man, you will get back up again. But if you're truly wicked in your spirit, what happens? Read on. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. What happens is the wicked fall and they never rise up. The wicked fall and they leave the truth. The wicked fall and go back to Christianity, back to Islam, back to drugs, back to hormones. That's what the wicked do. But a righteous man, he may fall, but he sure, he sure is going to get back up. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. And let's read verse 1 and 2. The book of 1 John, chapter 1 and verse 1. That which Pro, Chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2 and verse 1. Yeah. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. That ye sin not. Read. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So uh, John is telling us not to sin. What does he mean by not to sin? But if we do... We have an advocate, a mediator that speaks on our behalf to the Most High, Jesus the Christ. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 10, and let's read verse 26. What does he mean by if any man sin? Let's read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. Uh -huh. For if we sin willfully. If you sin willfully, read on. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So so what is John saying back in First John? He's saying now, uh, if you sin, because you may slip up, you may fall, although you are right, that Christ is the mediator for you on behalf of the Most High. But if you sin willfully, then the Most, then Christ can't help you. That's what he's saying. If you sin willfully, there's no more sacrifice. Christ ain't gonna keep shedding His blood for you when you willfully sin against the Most High. Give me that in the book of James. And it says here, James chapter 4, verse 17. Let's read that. Book of James chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good. If you know what is good, you know the laws of God. Read. And doeth it not. You sin willfully. To him it is sin. It is sin. That's what God says, thus saith the Lord. Now let's go back to uh, 1 John. Let's read chapter 1, verse 9. First John chapter one and verse nine. Yep. If we confess our sins. Well, let's go back to first John chapter two and let's read one and two together. First John chapter two and verse one. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Uh -huh. And if any man sin, if you happen to fall. Read. We have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. That's why you got to get back up. Read. And he is the propitiation for our sins uh -huh. and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. And that whole world is speaking of the all 12 tribes. Here's the precept. Give me the Isaiah 45, and let's read verse 17. What does John mean by the whole world? Let's see. Book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and verse 17. Uh -huh. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Mm -hmm. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world. Without end. The world that God is talking about, the world, the world that John is speaking about is all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Now let's go back to 1 John and let's read chapter 1 and let's read verse 9. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins. If we confess our sins, read. 
He is faithful and just uh -huh. to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why when you fall, you got to get back up because Christ, the advocate, when you repent from your sins, he is speaking to the Father on your behalf. So don't let it hold you back. Let's read it again, verse 9. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and let's read 19 through 22. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Huh? Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So therefore that you have this boldness, you understand that Christ is, is, your, is the advocate. He, he is faithful to forgive you if you confess your sin. Read. By a new and living way, uh -huh. which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, uh -huh. let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience uh -huh. and our bodies washed with pure water. So let us draw near to the throne of God because we understand we've been forgiven for our sins. Go to Romans chapter 6 and let's read 1 through 6. So what does that mean? What If you draw near to the throne of the Most High with this boldness, what does that mean for you? Read. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall a righteous man continue to sin and keep falling because he know that the, uh, that Christ will uh, forgive him for his sins if he confessed him? Uh, confessed him? Read. God forbid. Paul says, God forbid that you keep doing that. Our ob the, the object of this walk in the truth is not to continue into sin but to become perfect like our Father which is in heaven is perfect. Read on. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Uh -huh. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Uh -huh. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh -huh. even so we also should walk in newness of life. We have to walk in a newness of life. When you are the righteous that you fall and you get back up, walk in newness of life. Read on. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, read verse 6 to show what it means, newness of life. Read. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Newness of life means to put off that old man. Crucify that old man in you. Read on. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Uh -huh. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Now jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we dead to sin. No longer do we do the things that, uh, the old things that were against the law, the, the smoking, the uh, obsessive drinking, the whoremongering, the whoring, the going out to clubs, the going to church on Sunday, the believing in white Jesus, the selling drugs uh, to one another, the, the fighting and the killing and the hatred. No longer do we do those things. Now we are in Christ Jesus. Read on. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, uh -huh. that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, uh -huh. but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. That's what it means to walk in newness of life. No longer do you, do you sell drugs to uh, your people. Now you are telling them to get off of drugs. No longer are you whoremongering out uh, your sister. Now you are marrying that one sister. No longer are you being a whore and sleeping around as a woman. Now you are marrying that one man, keeping your body holy until the Lord brings you that man of God. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 31. Uh -huh. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. That's what the righteous does when he falls. He, can, he gets up and he goes on dying daily. What does that mean? The old man dies daily because it's a constant fight. It's a constant struggle. All the way until Christ returns, we have to go through tribulation and the and the uh, biggest enemy you have to conquer 
is that old man within. Read verse 31 again. Verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Uh -huh. I die daily. I die daily. Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 16. Let's read verse 67. What does God say through the mouth of Ezra? Read. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 67. Uh -huh. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins. Leave off from your sins. That's what the righteous do when they get back up. They leave off from their sins. Read. And forget your iniquities. Forget your iniquities because Christ, the advocate that prays to the Father on your behalf, you have been forgiven for that if you profess the, or confess those to Christ. Read on. To meddle no more with them forever. For how long? Forever. Righteous man got to get up and leave off from those sins forever. Don't go back to the old you. It may feel good to dwell in the flesh, but you are dying spiritually when you do that. Read on. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. That's what happens when the righteous get back up and you leave off from your sins and die daily. God will lead you from your trouble. He would make a way to escape, but you have to confess those and have a godly sorrow. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.